بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم هنحاول النهارده ان شاء الله نشوف كيس جديده في ال في ار سي ار 2 بي سيشن اي ويل تراي تو سبيك ان انجلش از ماتش از اي كان بات اي ماي فيل فورس ات تو سبيك ان عربيك ان سم بوينتس تو كلاريفاي ذا بوينت سو اي ابولوجايز فور ذيس ان ادفانس ذيس از اور كيس هيستوري اوف ريسنت تروما Uh, as we uh, told before, we just uh, wait for uh, seconds to collect the findings, then uh, start to speak. The suggested response in this case to say this is the chest radiograph, frontal view of a skeletally mature adult uh, male patient showing. Uh, by now, I hope you all um, be able to uh, get the findings of uh, this case and collect it uh, collect them together this case is uh, somewhat straightforward and um, relatively uh, spot diagnosis uh, so the problem in this case would be the uh, discussion that follows the diagnosis um, you may find <coughs> Uh, the history here is uh, maybe misleading uh, because uh, this case in most cases is asymptomatic. So the patient came for recent trauma uh, to distract you from the uh, findings present here. So you may start with uh, no rib fractures or neurothorax for recent trauma, but there is bilateral inferior uh, rib notching, as you can see here. As also, there is a small or indistinct aortic knob with more or less a uh, figure of uh, three configuration. Um, then these are the positive findings. Then we move on to the negatives, uh, the important negatives. Uh, we may say there is normal cardiac size and configuration. Uh, there is left-sided apex. Uh, that means there is no signs of hypertension or other associated congenital anomalies. The standing aorta is not dilated. No evidence of uh, sequelae of hypertension also. No aortic valve calcifications could be detected, which is common in this case due to associated bicusp bicuspid aortic valve. No soft tissue abnormality or paraspinal uh, masses or scoliosis to uh, uh, exclude the neurofibromatosis as a cause of rib notching, as we will uh, uh, say, uh, as we will see uh, uh, soon. Uh, no evidence of previous surgery, so it's mostly uh, not known case of uh, coarctation. Uh, there is uh, no pleural effusion or uh, any other abnormal important finding. So the diagnosis is straightforward. Here is coarctation of the aorta. The differential diagnosis of other cause of inferior inferior rib notching, the most important of which is are uh, is the neurofibromatosis. Other cause of figure of three configuration of the aortic knob is pseudo coarctation. So the most um, two important differential diagnoses in this case is neurofibromatosis and pseudo coarctation of the aorta. Then we move on to uh, mention the management of this patient. I, uh, you may say, I would like to review the clinical data of the patient to uh, uh, assess if he is a known case of coarctation or not. Uh, I may shake the pulses or blood pressure in both arms and legs uh, because in case of coarctation, there is discrepancy between the uh, uh, blood pressure of the upper and lower uh, limbs. Uh, I may... Uh, uh, consult cardiology or refer the patient to the cardiologist. Uh, MRI or MRA may be needed for further confirmation, maybe CT angiography, but MRI is, or MRA is much more uh, better. Uh, ECHO may have a role and uh, may need MRI, brain MRI or MRA to exclude associated brain aneurysm in some cases. We will discuss the case in more details in uh, the few uh, next few minutes. The discussion points may be what is the coarctation types of coarctation, hemodynamic clinical picture association and severity prognosis, what are the imaging modalities and findings that uh, may be seen in this case. The most important points in this lecture is the rib notching and figure of three configuration. Uh, we will give a hint on treatment and follow up of the case and other differential diagnosis. What's coarctation? Coarctation is the congenital narrowing at the level of the ductus arteriosus with variable length and degree of stenosis. The cause of coarctation is not known, is mostly idiopathic. 
there is there are many theories for this but is not uh, uh, important for this uh, scope uh, in this lecture five to ten percent of congenital heart disease so it is a common disorder uh, it is mostly sporadic but it, it may be associated with Turner syndrome and familial cases are also reported the male is are more males are more affected than females but if there is congenital cardiac anomalies associated, the men and the women are equally affected. The site of coarctation is mostly around the ductus arteriosus, so it's, it's called peri periductal, which is the aortic isthmus, the ductus arteriosus later on uh, fibrosed and become uh, ligamentum arteriosum. Uh, the typical location is distal to the takeoff or to the origin of the left subclavian artery, but um, in some cases it, it may involve the uh, origin of the left subclavian. Two types of coarctation co of the aorta are uh, common the preductal or the infantile type uh, uh, is more accurate to, to describe it as preductal because. Uh, Many cases of infantile coarctation are postductal, so it's preductal or postductal, sometimes called infantile and uh, or adult type. Uh, um, rarely, um, some books add the ductal type, which is not agreed uh, in most of uh, most of textbooks. So it is preductal or postductal. The preductal type is mostly uh, in infantile period, and it is called tubular hypoplasia. There is long segment of uh, coarctation and may be associated even with aortic arch hypoplasia. And postductal type is localized form and more uh, benign form. The hemodynamics and pathophysiology of coarctation, I think it is the most important point in this lecture because if you understand this, you can uh, understand many other imaging findings in the case. So let's imagine this is the ductus arteriosus and this is the coarctation is preductal time in uh, in infant uh, in neonates the ductus arteriosus is open and the infetal line the ductus arteriosus is open so uh, there is a coarctation preductal area uh, the flow uh, is coming from the pulmonary artery which is high pressure here compared to the distal aorta which is low pressure due to low flow uh, uh, passing through after closure of the ductus arteriosus, the blood is forced to uh, pass through the stenotic segment uh, of the coarctation and no blood passing from pulmonary artery to the aorta anymore. So there is increased pressure in the aorta before the stenotic segment and there is low pressure in the aorta distal to the stenotic segment. The high pressure proximally is transferred to the aortic arch, the ascending aorta so it may be uh, dilated to the heart so it may cause left uh, ventricular uh, dilatation or hypertrophy due to over, uh, afterload and may in, uh, ultimately lead to uh, heart failure uh, the blood also uh, passes to subclavian arteries uh, uh, in more uh, amount uh, in an amount more than the normal or the usual amount so it can cause uh, uh, increased blood pressure in upper limbs. Uh, in contrary, the lower limbs receive uh, less blood than usual, so there is lower limb uh, hypertension. With times, the collaterals begin to develop. The collaterals develop from the high pressure subclavian arteries to the low pressure uh, aorta and lower limb arteries or the arteries of the lower half of the body. The subclavian arteries are high pressure and receive much more blood so the subclavian arteries start to uh, uh, try to deliver more blood to the lower half of the body through collaterals. Which type of collaterals? Normally there is collaterals from the subclavian artery through the internal mammary artery the internal mammary artery give intercostal branches which then can col can uh, and a smooth way with collateral branches from uh, with intercostal branches from the aorta so 
by passing the stenotic segment or the coarctation segment. So if this left subclavian artery receiving more blood, the blood diverts to uh, internal, in, internal mammary artery, then to intercostal artery, then to aorta, then to the lower half of the body. And uh, the right side, uh, the same. Okay? So, if the subclavian artery does not receive a, a, a large amount of blood, it will not contribute to the uh, collaterals in its side because it has nothing to give to the award. Uh, the collaterals mainly from internal memory may be other collaterals but we will uh, focus on the internal memory and the intercostal uh, arteries uh, collaterals as the main uh, finding uh, or as the main cause for the uh, inferior rib notching as we will see uh, soon. This is a diagram for coarctation of the aorta. This is the right side of the heart. This is the pulmonary artery through the ligamentum, through the ductus arteriosum. Then it is fibrous to cause or to form a uh, ligamentum arteriosum. So, so there is no blood uh, diverting anymore from pulmonary to aorta. Left sided heart gives blood to the aorta. There is coarctation. Some blood passes through the coarctation to the lower half of the body, but most blood through the uh, subclavian and uh, carotid system uh, so there is increased pressure in the carotid system and the subclavian arteries low pressure in the lower half of the body the collateral develops from subclavian artery to internal membrane and intercostal arteries to post stenotic descending thoracic aorta which is the most important collateral there are many other collateral pathways such as from subclavian artery to internal memory also but to superior epigastric then inferior epigastric to external iliac artery <coughs> to supply the lower limbs. This is called Wenzel pathway, which can also occur, occur in uh, acquired or to iliac uh, uh, disease or occlusion. Many other collateral such as uh, collateral pathways such as uh, subclavian artery to thyrocervical or cost cervical trunk, thoracoacromial descending scapular to post stenotic aorta and through vertebral artery or uh, to anterior spinal artery, intercostal arteries and post stenotic descending aorta. If there is collateral circulation well developed, that means that there is hemodynamically significant lesion even in absence of visible, of visible uh, collateral vessels. I mean, if there is rib notching, if there is collateral seen by CT and geography or MRI, so there is significant coarctation. Uh, the second point, important point about collaterals is that it needs time to develop and to mature. So, let's uh, return to discussion points. What is what determines the severity and prognosis of coarctation? The, the, depends, uh, the severity of coarctation depends on two factors severity of the coarctation itself and the associated anomalies. So it can be classified as simple and complex. Simplex coarctation, which is isolated without, co co uh, without associated anomalies, and mostly it is post ductal type and adult type. The complex is uh, uh, coarctation, usually there is uh, other associated congenital cardiovascular anomaly uh, this, this is typically occurs in preductal infantile uh, form so in infantile form the, the, this is severe coarctation in infantile form because of the two uh, factors present the long segment severe stenosis or coarctation itself and the associated anomalies what are the associations with aortic coarctation uh, by cuspid aortic valve is the most common uh, association. Uh, Turner syndrome present in 20% of cases of Turner syndrome. Others such as conge especially congenital cardiac anomalies such as VSD and PDA. Berry aneurysm is also reported in circle of Willis. Less likely associations such as uh, uh, mitral valve disease, aneurysm of valsalva, sinus of valsalva, or aortic stenosis, TGA, tricuspid, Shun syndrome, phase, Marfan, many other associations. The clinical picture of coarctation, the patient may become uh, or may be totally asymptomatic. So the patient may uh, uh, present with other uh, uh, accidental 
discovery such as in our case for uh, e.g. for trauma or uh, preoperative evaluation in chest radiography or uh, evaluation for uh, hypertension or so on. So it may be asymptomatic, may uh, complain of hypertension which is the most common clinical uh, uh, symptom of the patient. So renal Doppler may be the first uh, radiological study to suspect the presence of coarctation. Uh, because if young patient complaining of uh, hypertension, uh, so the clinician may uh, suggest uh, uh, he may he or she may have uh, uh, renal artery stenosis, and he may send the patient to do renal Doppler, and we will see the findings of co of uh, co uh, renal Doppler in case of coarctation soon. Uh, the patient may also uh, suffer from chest pain with exertion or claudication. Uh, uh, on examination, uh, he may uh, or we may uh, sh uh, see weak or delayed femoral pulses compared to the radial artery. Uh, may hear murmur or bacterial endocarditis in case of bicuspid aortic valve. In more severe or infantile form, the patient may present with neon neonatal or infantile congestive, congestive heart failure, and, this, uh, and uh, this typically occurs a few days or. A uh, uh, few hours after delivery, after closure of the ductus arteriosus, and this is one of the uh, common causes of neonatal uh, uh, congestive heart failure. The second cause after hypoplastic left heart uh, rarely may present with uh, differential stenosis or intracranial hemorrhage. The complications of coarctation. The coarctation. Uh, though may be asymptomatic but it also may cause uh, uh, complications uh, uh, there is early mortality in cases of uh, coarctation or patients with coarctation because the mortality mainly because of aortic dissection heart failure or mi endocarditis especially with bicuspid uh, aortic valve or intracranial hemorrhage with uh, perianeurysm uh, even with repair, the survival is improved, but patients remain at risk of free coarctation, restenosis, or aneurysm, pseudoaneurysm, and dissection. Let's move on to imaging modalities to uh, study uh, coarctation. First is chest radiography. Uh, second is CT or CT angiography. Third is MRI, MRA, and then angiography, echo, doubler, or barium swallow. Uh, really, Doppler and Benny Masuelo are not uh, primary investigations for coarctation, but it, we can detect coarctation of the aorta in these studies uh, by accident, accidentally. This C in chest radiography may be normal in mild cases. Rib notching is the most common finding in cases of coarctation, present in about 50-60% of cases sometimes called the Rosler sign, which is not famous name. Figure three, figure of three configuration of the aortic knob is the second most common finding in cases of uh, coarctation. Maybe there is cardiomegaly, especially left ventricular dilatation due to overload, uh, dilated ascending aorta also due to hypertension, signs of heart failure, especially in the NAS, maybe pulmonary edema, signs of previous surgery, uh, may be seen if the patient underwent surgery. Uh, also, there may be paratracheal stripe due to dilated collaterals. Here is another example of the chest radiography. You can see abnormal aortic configuration may uh, more or less figure of three configuration. There are also many rib notching, posterior rib notching. We will discuss uh, this soon. And there is also dilated ascending aorta due to chronic hypertension. The rib notching. There are many facts about rib notching you should uh, know. Uh, this may be the most important point in uh, our lecture. The rib notching and coarctation of the aorta starts from the third to ninth rib, uh, not the first and second, and not the last two ribs. And the most commonly between the fourth and eighth ribs. Uh, why the first and second ribs are not involved in uh, coarctation, we will see now. Um, or um, I mentioned this now. Uh, the first and second rib arising from uh, 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 subclavian artery. 
uh, not joining the intercostal arteries so the subclavian artery is high pressure uh, gives uh, first uh, uh, and second uh, uh, branches but these branches cannot deliver blood to aorta so there is no collateral to develop in this area because this collateral is not beneficial the, the collaterals develop in third to ninth rib because these ribs these intercostal arteries can deliver uh, uh, blood to the aorta and last uh, two ribs or two intercostal arteries are not connected to subclavian arteries uh, so they cannot uh, form uh, large collaterals to cause uh, rib notch the second fact is the collaterals best seen in posterior ribs not in anterior ribs because the posterior ribs uh, in posterior ribs the intercostal arteries are uh, intimately related to the uh, subcostal groove um, uh, but in anterior ribs the uh, intercostal arteries are away from the ribs uh, typically the rib notching in coarctation is bilateral and we will see the exceptions uh, just uh, uh, after a few seconds uh, due to these collaterals uh, this rib notching is due to collaterals intercostal artery dilatations as we mentioned uh, rarely found below 5 to 10 years of age as we mentioned it uh, takes time to develop and to mature and may disappear after treatment because of decreased size and pulsation of the uh, coarctation this uh, rib notching occurs due to pressure remodeling of uh, uh, collaterals upon the adjacent uh, uh, bone the differential diagnosis of inferior rib notching we should know that uh, the subcostal groove contains the arteries the veins and the nerve intercostal artery intercostal vein and nerve this is called neurovascular bundle so the causes of inferior rib notching may be arterial venous or neurogenic the arterial the most important is the coarctation of the aorta which is the first or the most common cause of core of re inferior rib notching other arterial causes of inferior rib notching may be subclavian artery obstruction and then the collaterals is the is the reverse uh, from aorta to subclavian uh, this occurs after blalactosic uh, uh, shunt of fallot tetralogy or subclavian artery obstruction due to any cause of vasculitis. The most common is tachyas, especially at the left side, uh, interrupted aortic arch, uh, decreased pulmonary blood supply, and etc. Venous uh, is not common cause of uh, uh, rib notching but may occur in superior venous uh, superior vena cava obstruction or uh, arteriovenous malformation of intercostal uh, arteries and this is mainly due to venous uh, collaterals neurogenic be due to enlargement of the intercostal nerves as in case of neurofibromatosis which is the second common cause of inferior uh, rib notching the superior rib notching occurs due to different differential diagnosis mainly due to connective tissue disorders such as rheumatoid arthritis, scleroderma and systemic lupus may also occur due to hyperparathyroidism and neurofibromatosis so neurofibromatosis can cause superior and inferior rib notchings and even the rib, the rib notching may be so severe uh, uh, so the ribs may appear as ribbon shaped other causes of in superior rib notching such as Marfan syndrome, osteogenesis imperfecta, uh, elderly may be relatively uh, aging process or restrictive lung disease or polio or etc. Some books mention that hyperparathyroidism may also cause inferior rib notching but it is not uh, so common. Superior is much more common. So what are the causes of unilateral rib notching? In our case there is bilateral rib notching and uh, this is the classic appearance of rib notching in cases of coarctation. But in, many, in, in some few cases there may be unilateral rib notching. Uh, unilateral rib notching may be right sided or left sided. Right sided rib notching only means that the left sided subclavian artery does not contribute to the collateral to the aorta why because sub the left subclavian artery receives uh, no adequate blood to form collaterals so 
This occurs in cases of coarctation of the aorta, which involves the left subclavian artery origin. If the coarctation involves the subclavian artery origin, so the left subclavian artery does not have enough blood. How can it contribute to the co uh, uh, collateral uh, circ circulation to the aorta? يعني أنا قصدي إن هو نفسه محتاج بلاد مش هيقدر يدي للأورتا ده هو محتاج الكولاترالز اللي تديله فأكيد ده مش هيبقى فيه كولاترالز ليه الأورتا so in this case the coarctation of the aorta is only right sided because the right subclavian artery receives the blood and it can contribute to the collaterals through the intercostal arteries to lower half of the body okay how can it care to be left sided notching only not right sided left sided rib uh, non left sided rib notching only in case of coarctation this is not common at all but it can occur because the left sided subclavian artery uh, receives good blood and can contribute to the uh, uh, collateral circulation to the aorta to the lower half of the body while the right subclavian artery does not receive adequate blood how can this occur uh, by the fact that right subclavian artery originates before or proximal uh, to the left subclavian? So this only occurs if there is apparent right subclavian artery which originates distal to the coarctation. So the left subclavian artery originates proximal to the coarctation, receiving adequate blood, but the right subclavian artery originates distal to the coarctation, not receiving adequate blood, so cannot contribute to the collaterals. But unilateral rib notching may also occur in other causes than in a coarctation of the award, such as in BT surgery, bilateral surgery, uh, especially in the upper two ribs on the ipsilateral side of uh, surgery, which is surgery done for correction of uh, fallow tetralogy. Tachyoso arthritis also occurs. Uh, there is, there may be uh, obstruction of the uh, subclavian artery, especially the left subclavian, and there is collateral at the side of uh, occlusion, ipsilateral to the occlusion, ipsilateral pulmonary artery hypoplasia. There is also dilatation of the systemic circulation at this side to deliver some blood to the uh, uh, lung to compensate for pulmonary artery hypoplasia. Uh, the second imaging mortality is CT, which is very good anatomical study to uh, uh, assess the degree and the location of the narrowing, especially in oblique 3D volume uh, uh, volume rendering images, and assess the extent and course of collaterals, and visualize the aortic branches and its relation to the coarctation, especially the subclavian arteries. But its uh, uh, drawbacks. Is it is not functional study and there is high radiation exposure, especially in those patients uh, which we can who we can need or we may need to uh, do many times a study to follow up uh, the, the condition. So the MRI is more uh, beneficial or. Um, more recommended in cases of coarctation because it has anatomical imaging as well as functional imaging. Functional imaging through phase contrast MR that allows estimation of flow velocities, flow gradient, and collateral flow. And this is important to distinguish pseudo coarctation from aortic coarctation uh, as we will uh, see uh, next, inshallah. No radiation exposure in MRI, so we can repeat the study many times more accurate and cost-effective than ECHO in for uh, post-intervention follow-up. The, uh, the role of MRI is to assess the coarctation, length and severity, to assess the collaterals, especially with contrast-enhanced MRA, and velocity-encoded sign MRA is also, uh, can also assess the pressure uh, difference and the pressure gradient to assess the uh, collateral circulation. Also, MRI of the heart to assess the left ventricular mass and associated anomalies, uh, also in follow-up after uh, therapy. The protocol is 
contrast enhanced MRA for collaterals, face contrast MRA or velocity encoded sign MRI imaging, cardiac MRI for bicuspid and other anomalies, sagittal oblique view is called candy cane view, cane, not cane, here is a mistake, candy cane view and ECG gated T1 weighted MRI. This is MRA. Here is the here is the coarctation and many collaterals seen internal memory artery dilatation. This is black blood T1, sagittal oblique view, candy cane view. This this is the coarctation segment. In axial we can see dilated internal memory arteries, and we may see the collaterals. This is the candy cane aortic sequence. This is the gradient. This is flow void avoid due to um, uh, passing uh, of blood through the stenotic segment. This is the collaterals. The catheter angiography was the gold standard uh, imaging modality for diagnosing uh, coarctation before widespread MRI. Can delineate the degree and location of coarctation and uh, measure the pressure gradient. And if it is more than 20 millimeter mercury, usually in the state's intervention. The Doppler study. We mentioned that renal Doppler study may be the first study to discover coarctation. Uh, if we do renal Doppler in case of coarctation, we may find uh, some findings of bilateral renal artery stenosis, tardus parvus Doppler waveform in both renal arteries. So we move on to abdominal aorta and we may find also this, this wave, tardus parvus, in the aorta. So we, this uh, may uh, give us some clue that there is proximal uh, obstruction in the aorta, but it is not specific for coarctation, maybe any cause of uh, obstruction. So alert the uh, uh, clinician to do more investigation to exclude coarctation. In barium swallow, this is not done anymore for diagnosing of coarctation, but Accidentally, when we uh, do barium swallow for any other cause of uh, dysphagia, uh, we may find the reverse figure of three sign in lateral oblique view, as in this case. The echo can demonstrate pressure gradients across the, sten across the stenosis and detect by cuspid aortic valve or any other associated cardiac anomalies. So, how can we treat? aortic coarctation. It is based on clinical and imaging findings. In severe cases such as neonatal infantile form, this is uh, heart failure, they may give some drugs, prostaglandins, uh, to keep the ductus arteriosus patent as much as they can, then uh, to, to avoid the heart failure, then do uh, surgical correction. In adults, um, may do surgery or uh, more recently endo uh, vascular treatment, uh, transluminal angioplasty, and may put stents, especially in case of re -coarctation. After treatment, there is also complications that may occur, such as systemic hypertension or arthritis, and late complications of aneurysm, pseudoaneurysm, re and infective endocarditis. So after treatment, th these patients uh, should undergo uh, uh, regular follow-up, especially with MRI. This is a, an example of CT and geography. This is the coarctation segment and these are the collaterals. MRA, collaterals, and coarctation. There is collateral here. And this is the coarctation here and dilated internal mammary artery. This is another case. Here the rib, the rib notching may be very subtle in some cases such as this case and the figure of three or indistinct aortic knob may be seen. Is, here is the CT and geography. There is such a web-like, very subtle case of coarctation, web-like shelf here in aortic isthmus. Here is more obvious case of uh, inferior rib notching and the axial image shows the coarctation and the dilated internal mammary arteries, dilated inter sub intercostal uh, arteries uh, as collaterals. Here is another case of inferior rib notching bilaterally. The posterior ribs are uh, uh, more obvious than anterior, especially the middle zones ribs, not the first two ribs, nor the last two ribs. 
CT angiography showing collateral, sh showing the coarctation in very nice way. MRI showing the coarctation and the intercostal uh, collaterals. Here is another case of inferior rib notching. Here, here, and this is the MRA. Here's another case, important rib notching is relatively obvious and the abnormal aortic contour, indistinct aortic contour, abnormal shape. This is baratracheal strap due to dilated collaterals. Here is dilated intermammary artery and the, um, uh, the CT angiography showing the uh, coarctation and the collaterals very nicely. MRA, another example of MRA showing the collaterals and the coarctation. If you find coarctation in a female patient, here with inferior rib notching, indistinct aortic knob, this is a case of coarctation, but take care. It, in female patient, should consider Turner syndrome. Here's another way that this case may be presented in the exam in Viva. This is chest radiography, frontal view with inferior rib notching and the stent is seen here. This stent with rib notching indicates this is a known case of coarctation of the aorta and corrected maybe also with recurrence and stent placement. After stent placement, the collaterals may reduce in size and pulsation and the rib erosions may start to uh, uh, disappear. Take care of the cases of chest radiographic findings in case of shoulder x-ray. This is a common uh, case in Viva and always in case of shoulder radiography, look at the lungs. Here, not uh, a, a typical case of shoulder radiography, but in, if we concentrate in this point, we may miss the findings. Here, there is inferior rib notching. There is indistinct aortic knob, there is previous cardiac surgery, there is cardiomegaly. So this was, case, this was a case of known coarctation of the aorta treated surgically. I will mention some points to the differential diagnosis of rib notching and coarctation. The most important is neurofibr neurofibromatosis. Uh, in neurofibromatosis, we can find deformed thin irregular ribs, which is called uh, ribbon ribs, uh, due to bone hypoplasia and the pressure effects of the intercostal neurofibromas. The rib notching is more pronounced in neurofibromatosis than in coarctation. Uh, there is there may be associated features of neurofibromatosis, other stigmata of neurofibromatosis. Uh, the most important are subcutaneous nodules, posterior mediastinal masses, skyphoscoliosis, and interstitial lung disease with normal or increased lung volumes. This is a, a case of neurofibromatosis. This, there is inferior rib notching. There is paraspinal masses. There is subcutaneous nodules. This is a case of neurofibromatosis. Blalactosic shunt for tetralogy of phalla, uh, subclavian artery to pulmonary artery stenosis, so there is unilateral rib notching at the site of the procedure, especially in the upper three or four ribs. There may be also evidence of thoracotomy, median sternotomy, and abnormal cardiac contour. Tachyoso arthritis vasculitis, commonly affecting the aorta and the aortic branches, especially the subclavian and left subclavian artery, especially. Subclavian vein obstruction rarely occurs, especially in cases of lung cancer or lymphoma. Uh, in addition to rib notching, you may find the superior mediastinal widening, hilar masses, other signs of malignancy in chest radiography, such as nodules, lytic rib regions, or lymphangitis. A point, an important point in this lecture is pseudo coarctation, which is a differential for coarctation or for the true coarctation of the award. This is the pseudo-coarctation. There is figure of three configuration of the aortic knob, high riding aortic uh, arch, but there is no rib notching. In CT angiography, it is very obvious. There is kinking or tilt, tilting or tethering of the aorta, as seen also in catheter angiography. This is a rare congenital anomaly. Uh, 
in which there is kinking, buckling, redundancy, or tethering of the aorta at the site of attachment of the ligamentum arteriosum. Uh, some uh, authors consider it as the mildest form of coarctation. Uh, the, the patient usually manifests in older age due to uh, associated atherosclerosis, usually asymptomatic, and the pressure gradient between uh, uh, or across the stenosis is uh, less than 20 uh, millimeter mercury, so there is uh, no rib notching or collaterals uh, may be associated with other anomalies such as bicuspid aortic valve uh, and the increased risk of aneurysm formation aortic dissection. The patient may be also hypertensive. Uh, the diagnosis is mainly dependent on catheter and geography or MRA and uh, typically managed conservatively for especially for hypertension. Uh, if the patient is severely symptomatic, may require surgery, but it is not common. Pseudocarctation is due to uh, tethering or uh, kinking of the aorta. Uh, the aortic arch is elevated high, cervical in position, no narrowing of the visceral lumen, no significant pressure gradient, no collateral circulation, so no rib notching, no, no left ventricular hypertrophy or ascending aortic dilatation. This is another case of pseudocarctation. Here we can see the arch of aorta kinked and this, uh, enlarged. This is the CT angiography, it's very obvious here. Just kinking, no narrowing, no collaterals. Here's reverse, uh, sorry, the figure of three configuration but without rib notching. This patient was cancer patient uh, with a porticus, but he, he had also pseudo coarctation. This is another way, another example of pseudocoarctation, and this is CT and geography. CT and geography of pseudocoarctation. This is another case. So, we have many puzzle cases in uh, this uh, uh, lecture. If you find figure of three only, suggest pseudocoarctation or less likely true coarctation. But if you see figure of three plus inferior rib notching so it is true coarctation such as in our case today but if there is inferior rib notching only it is more common to be true coarctation rather than neurofibromatosis because in the cases of neurofibromatosis we may find other stigmata of neurofibromatosis such as skin nodules as we mentioned rib notching plus skin nodules it is neurofibromatosis Neuro, uh, rib notching plus standing it is treated co Coarctation of the aorta. Rib notching with aortic valve calcification suggests suspected uh, uh, bicuspid aortic valve as an association. The patient may present with endocarditis. If you find coarctation in female, suspect Turner syndrome. So the teaching points here are coarctation of the aorta, how to approach the case, causes of rib notching, inferior and superior are the most important points in this lecture. Causes of figure of three configuration, signs of neurofibromatosis in chest x-ray, we will, we may uh, uh, make a video specific for this in next weeks, inshallah, uh, and uh, we learned the points about pseudocoarctation of the world. Thank you very much.